Introduction to 3D Printing, CAD 107. Hi, Joe Cerrone. I will be teaching this course with Alan Rosen, and this is the introductory lecture for the class. The syllabus is located in D2L, and our contact information is here. You can email me, or you can email Alan Rosen, you can contact me by phone, but it's, a, it's easier to get a hold of us by email. There's no prerequisites for the course. It's a two credit hour course, so it's, it's really just a, a brief introduction to 3D printing. And we've done quite a bit of work with our 3D printing area, and I'll go over that in this lecture. The course is an introduction to 3D printing with an emphasis on 3D printers and design of 3D printed parts. And so the course is offered in the CAD department, which stands for Computer Aided Design. The computer will use, be used by students to create three-dimensional models and prepare models to print. And so we'll be using CAD software to create the models. And we'll go through these in a step-by-step -step approach and then be able to take them and bring them into a slicing software and get them ready for 3D printing. Oops. So the learning objectives are to analyze engineering functions of existing projects, apply design principles, work in teams, develop design objectives, build functional physical models and test them, explain current and emerging 3D printing applications, describe the advantages and limitations of 3D printing, and to design and print objects. And lastly, on this, on this last learning objectives, that's the main focus. We're going to be going through and doing a lot of design and print. Academic integrity, uh, basically that information is there for you so that you understand uh, the rules for students. And it's a good idea to take a look at those things. Our outline of topics, uh, as we go through it, you know, we'll go through basically chapter by chapter from this Mastering 3D Printing. And we'll also tie that into the 3D Printing Projects book. And so this has all the projects, and this has the theory, and then we'll bring that together for you in the course. And so here's our outline of topics, and we'll start off with our first chapter. We're going to use a combination of online tutorials, textbook readings, and videos. And um, the course practices required will be completion of the 3D printing labs in each module. We'll have quizzes in a final exam and then submission of these models into the D2L Dropbox. So you can get these books from Amazon. Uh, if you click on the link, um, and I'm not sure if I can link to it. At this point, I can't. Um, but the books are really reasonably priced. Uh, this book right here, the 3D Printing Projects, is about $12. And the 3D Printing, Mastering 3D Printing, is about $30. Um, so those are uh, reasonable prices, and I think the best way to get them is to get them uh, on Amazon or to, um, or to uh, contact the bookstore if you need to get the book that way. Methods of evaluating student progress. Students will be grading according to standard drawing conventions provided uh, on the assigned rubrics. It's a straight scale, 90, 80, 70, 60, and below 60 for the corresponding A, B, C, D. If you have any sort of special needs um, and you uh, need some assistance, Oakton is very good with that. Um, you can contact me or you can contact someone in the counseling office. Uh, there's all kinds of bad things that happen to people and uh, Oakton's a safe place. If you need some help, we have people that are, um, are there for you. And so, um, that information is in the syllabus, and if you do have anything that you need to talk to Mr. Rosen and I about, feel free to talk to us um, offline. So here's our textbooks, Mastering 3D Printing and 3D Printing Projects. The student software, we're going to primarily start off with AutoCAD, and I do get a number of people that are good with SolidWorks, and um, I'm, I'm quite good with both of those softwares as well, but to start off the course, we're going to use AutoCAD. Those of you who have experience with, with SOLIDWORKS can use that. 
but initially as we start to set up the course we want to start off with the AutoCAD software since Mr. Rosen and I are, are, are quite good with that software. Um, as we go through it you'll need to download that software and so if you if you link to that uh, this is the students version of AutoCAD and you can go and you can download the student version of AutoCAD. When you do um, sign in for the CAD software, use your .edu Oakton email because a lot of times they will not grant you access unless you're a student. The software itself costs about $3,500, but for students it's free. Dremel 3D printing software. Uh, we will be using these Bosch Dremel printers and they're really terrific printers. Um, Bosch Dremel is located near the Des Plaines campus. It's about 10 minutes away um, in Mount Prospect. And um, they have been working with us over the years to um, get us up and running with 3D printing uh, from a desktop point of view. You can download the software from this site right here And so we'll be using the 3D software. And the 3D software is available for Windows or for Mac. And then there's a nice video on how to use the software here. And so this is basically what it looks like. That's their printers, that's their newer printer, which is the 3D45. And that link is embedded in the PowerPoint. So this is what the printer looks like. Um, it's about the size of a microwave oven, and they're really uh, very well put together. Um, they have an enclosure, they have a heated bed, they work with uh, a number of different materials. And we thought it'd be kind of neat to talk about some of the things that you can print with them. So here's a YouTube video. Build custom industrial machines. Just some demonstrations, you'll notice that what's really neat about it is that they have sort of a, you can make anything with these 3D printers and super glue. So here's a, a, a gear assembly. And you call it a fidget. And you'll notice that as the part is built up, that it has sort of a, a honeycomb pattern inside. And it also has this support material down here underneath the chin. The material can be um, a little bit sharp. It's a good idea to wear gloves and glasses, safety glasses when you, when you remove it. And they're using a software called Octoprint. And what it does is it takes a picture every layer. So you can see the clock in the background. And that print took at least five, six hours.
you can see that this is printed with a, a multicolored material filament. And so as we start to look at 3D printing, the big emphasis is moving towards the different types of materials that you can print. This is really cool. This is called uh, Spiralize Outer Contour. And we'll do a project um, like this where we'll design a, a base. It prints very fast and it's, it's really a very interesting technique to be able to model and build these. So here's another example of a, a shiny metallic filament. And you can go online and you can find models at the Smithsonian Institute now. So you can get things, everything from uh, the Leaning Tower of Pisa to the Taj Mahal, and you can download those and print them. All right. So that video is available within our lecture. You can click on it and you can view some of the other aspects of 3D printing. And it's really pretty cool because they use the Octo, uh, Octo print to be able to photograph each layer as it's printed and then they time lapse it. The printers that we'll be using primarily will be these 3D45s, and um, they have a fully enclosed um, build. They use uh, radio frequency ID uh, tags on the material to set up the print. And so if you put in a PLA, which is a, a plant-based uh, material uh, called poly polyelectric acid, um, it will then set the machine for the proper heat and temperature to extrude it from the nozzle. The build size that we can build is 10 inches by 6 inches by 6.7 inches. Uh, it's got this platform on it and it's got an LCD screen which makes it really easy to work with and a USB port so that you can print things offline. What, what else is really neat about them is they're Wi-Fi connected now and so they actually have print clouds where you can actually take your, your, your project and print it just like you could print on a regular printer remotely. The build uh, resolution gets down to how fine a print you can make or how smooth it will be. The textbook, as we talk about the textbook, again, we'll be using the Mastering 3D Printing, a guide to modeling, printing, and prototyping for this course. And as you look at it, it's going to talk to us about, or at least we'll use it for, first off, what situations would you want to use a 3D printer for? And then the next chapter will go into materials. And so things like PLA and ABS and other types of materials, they even have carbon fiber and, and metal printers now uh, that you can use. We'll also look at slicing software. That was the Dremel software that we were um, looking at in a few slides back. And then going into if you decide to buy your own 3D printer, which um, a lot of people I think will. I think they're going to be as common as, as regular paper printers for people who want to do something like this because they're great. I mean, if you have something that breaks on your computer, if you need something for like a, a knob that broke on your stove, 
you can download and print those. And so a lot of your computer builders now have parts that you can download. And we've had a number of CAD students who have been getting jobs with companies like McMaster Car that, that have these catalogs full of parts. And what they're doing is they're modeling or drawing the CAD parts so that people can download them and use them in their CAD design work. So why would you use a 3D printer? Well, 3D printing has been around since the 80s, and it exploded in popularity when the patents ran out in the, in the 2000s, and that's around the same time that we purchased our first 3D printer. What you'll find is that uh, the desktop 3D printers are getting really quite good, and you can get into your own 3D printer for about a thousand dollars you can get them for a lot less but it, it it depends on you know what you want and your technical abilities to be able to work with those but when you get down to it it's kind of like a an anything maker when you get down to it you can make these sign language symbols or you can make these little models when I was younger I would go out and I'd buy a model every week and I'd put it together now you can print your own models and then, you know, being able to do things like assemblies and actually working motors. We have um, a project we do in our SolidWorks class where we'll do uh, a motor. So 3D printing is also called additive manufacturing. And it, it works like this. You have the filament that's on a coil and it's loaded into an extruder. And the extruder has a heated nozzle and it's kind of like a glue gun. And so the plastic material is fed into the machine by these motors which control precisely the amount that comes out and then it has an X, Y, and Z Cartesian coordinate system that goes through the tool path and lays down the material layer by layer on this heated bed or platen. And so it's called additive manufacturing because you don't have to remove any material. You don't take a block of metal or a piece of wood and then take a cutting tool and remove it. As far as the history of 3D printing, um, Chuck Hull, Charles W. Hull, born 1939, so he's 81, um, is kind of the founder um, of this technology and he basically came up with the first working 3D printer in 1984 and the machines were very expensive in those days. I remember seeing some of these printers back in the 90s at some of these mold companies and they're big and heavy and expensive and so um, these different types of printers we will study and so we'll look at selective laser sintering, FDM or fused deposit modeling. This is a fused deposit modeling technology, FDM, and we'll look at some of the laser. This is also FDM and it's printing metal. What type of printer, you know, um, as far as if you want to get a kit or if you're going to get one fully assembled, it really depends on your ability uh, technically. My recommendation is to buy them assembled because they're not that easy to assemble and you have to have a very good mechanical ability to do that. With that said, we've had uh, a number of students who have put their own together and they've done very well with it. But it's, it's, it's one of those things, if you're gonna go and spend $700 to put it together, maybe you're better off spending the extra $250 to get it completed. So when do you use a 3D printer? Well, you can make certain things with a 3D printer that you can't print any other way. So this, model that this gentleman is holding here in his hands really couldn't be made any other way than with this layer by layer 3D printing technology. Another thing that's really neat about 3D printing is the ability to print things out and then have them printed assembled. I don't know if this one is, but um, you have the ability now to print these with a plastic material and then a water soluble material which will dissolve and then leave the working model. And so that's another thing that is um, on the rise as far as why 3D printing is becoming so popular. 
As far as using a 3D printer versus a CNC machine, CNC machines stand for computer numerical controlled machines and they, they run with cutting tools. And I have a slide um, coming up about CNC machines and about laser printing. But they're all kind of that new technology that runs off CAD-based models, which takes away a lot of the handwork that we used to have to do to make prototypes. When I was in high school in the 80s, um, I took machine shop and graphic arts and, and woods and things like that. And it was all very manual. And so you had to, to know how to set up the machine. You had to be able to read measurements. You had to turn, turn knobs. And, and now the machines are controlled by computers and stepper motors. Laser cutting is a very interesting technology as well. And it's quick. It's CAD-based and it also has some really great techniques. And so we have a laser cutter at the Skokie campus. I'll give you